Hello viewers. In this video lecture today we are going to talk about micro irrigation systems. That is the session 1 of unit 1 on introduction to micro irrigation systems for the job role of micro irrigation technician. Micro irrigation is the slow application of continuous drips, tiny streams or miniature sprays of water above or below the soil surface. In this session on micro irrigation systems, you will learn about the main features of micro irrigation systems and its classification. Micro irrigation can be useful in undulating terrain. Undulating terrain means that the landscape is curvy and has gentle and smooth valley. Rolling topography. Rolling topography is any land formation that is not high enough to be considered a mountain. Hilly areas. Hilly areas have undulating land due to which irrigating the plants through surface irrigation is quite difficult. Barren lands. Barren land has less than one third of the area with vegetation. It includes deserts, dry salt flats, beaches, sand dunes, exposed rock, strip mines, quarries and gravel pits. Shallow soils. Soils are considered shallow if they extend less than 10 inches deep before hitting an impervious layer that retards root growth. According to the depth, soil types can be classified as shallow, that is depth less than 22.5 cm, medium deep, that is 22.5 to 45 cm, and deep soil more than 45 cm deep. Micro irrigation system can be broadly classified into two categories drip irrigation system and sprinkler irrigation system. Drip irrigation system, also known as trickle irrigation system, is a method of applying the required amount of water directly to the root zones of plants through drippers or emitters at frequent intervals. In this system, water is applied drop by drop or by a micro jet on the soil surface or subsurface at a rate lower than the infiltration rate of the soil. The emitters dissipate pressure from the distribution system by the means of orifices, vortexes and tortures or long flow paths thus allowing a limited volume of water to be discharged. Most emitters are placed on the ground, but they can also be buried. The emitted water moves within the soil system, largely by the unsaturated flow. The water moves into the soil and wets the root zones of the plants, vertically by gravity and laterally by capillary action. The lateral movement of water beneath the surface is greater in medium to heavy soil as compared to the sandy soils. The wetted soil surface for widely spaced emitters will normally be elliptical in shape. The drip irrigation can be used on windy days and during various land operations. Drip irrigation system can be classified into the following. Surface drip irrigation, subsurface drip irrigation, family drip irrigation, online drip irrigation, inline drip irrigation. Let's see. Surface drip irrigation, subsurface drip irrigation, family drip, online drip, and inline drip. Now let us learn about the various types of drip irrigation systems. Surface drip irrigation. Surface drip irrigation system uses close emitter spacing of 12 inches to 18 inches and a thin wall drip line injected 1 inch to 6 inch below the surface. The sub mains can be permanent or temporary. These systems are often referred to as temporary because the drip line is retrieved and recycled yearly. It is widely used to irrigate perennial crops 
such as trees and vines and annual row crops. Subsurface drip irrigation. Subsurface irrigation system uses 20 inches to 27 inches of emitter spacing and a slightly thicker wall of drip line, which could be 13 to 15 mil, uh, which is injected 18 inch to 14 inch below the surface. These systems are permanent, making design and installation critical to ensure longevity of crops. Family drip irrigation. So family drip or gravity fed drip irrigation is designed for areas measuring 500 to 1000 meter square. It consists of five components, elevated tank, shutoff wall, filter, main line and drip line. Online drip irrigation in online drip irrigation, the emitters are fixed externally on the laterals at the design spacing. These are widely used in orchards, vineyards, landscaping, and nursery. Inline drip irrigation. In inline drip irrigation systems, drippers are fixed in the lateral tube at the time of manufacturing at different spacing to suit the requirements of different crops. It is very effective for the row crops like cotton, sugarcane, groundnut, vegetables, and flowering crops. Sprinkler irrigation. In sprinkler irrigation, water is discharged under pressure in the air through a set of nozzles attached to a network of high density polyethylene pipes. It is widely used for cereals, pulses, spices and field crops. When we talk of sprinkler irrigation system, it is a method of applying water in a manner similar to rain. You must have experienced rainy days. The same happens in the sprinkler irrigation. It is suited to most row, field and tree crops. Water can be sprayed over or under the crop canopy. In a site, it is known to be windy most of the time. So sprinkler irrigation will not be suitable. The sprinkler breaks up the water into droplet size of 0.5 to 4 millimeters. The drop size is controlled by pressure and nozzle size of the sprinklers. The average rate at which water is sprayed onto the crops is measured in millimeters per hour. The application rate generally depends on the size of the sprinkler nozzles, operating pressure, and the distance between the two sprinklers. The application rate must not exceed the maximum allowable infiltration rate for the soil type. So you have to be very careful with regard to this. The force with which the water flows out of the sprinkler is known as its water pressure. Water pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. That is, in short, we call it as PSI. Sprinklers are therefore designed to work at certain pressure levels, which are recommended as the operating pressure. If the pressure is above or below than the recommended level, then the distribution of water will be affected. When the pressure is low, the water drops become larger and they cannot irrigate the crops that are far from the system. So you have to be very careful in terms of the pressure. If the pressure is high, then the droplets will be smaller and the crops will not be irrigated evenly. It can also damage the sprinkler heads. Although sprinklers are adaptable to most soils, they are best suited for sandy soils. These can be used for irrigating lawns, gardens, and agricultural fields. So viewers, let us see the different types of sprinklers. Center pivot, towable pivot, rain gun, impact sprinkler, pop-up sprinkler, and linear move sprinkler. Center pivot. Now let's see what is center pivot. 
It consists of a single sprinkler, laterally supported by a series of towers. It is anchored at one end and rotates around a fixed central point called pivot point. Toable pivot. Toable pivot is similar to center pivot, but here the pivot is towed away by a tractor. There are three to four wheels in the center of the pivot, which makes it possible to move the pivot from one place to another by pulling it with the help of the tractor. Rain gun. Rain gun is used as a water spray mist or a fog beam. It discharges water at less than 175 liters per hour. It is used to irrigate trees and other crops separated widely. Impact sprinkler. This sprinkler is driven in a circular motion by the force of outgoing water and at least one of its arms extends from the head. The sprinkler arm is repeatedly pushed back into the water stream by a spring. When the arm strikes the water stream, it scatters the stream and reorients the flow, enabling a uniform watering around the sprinkler. Pop-up sprinkler. The pop-up sprinkler consists of an inlet body, cap, wiper seal, riser, nozzle, and radius adjustment screw. Linear move sprinkler. Linear move sprinkler is similar to the center pivot system in construction, except that neither end of the lateral pipe is fixed. There are distinct differences in the water flow rate, operating pressure requirement, and the measurement of the wetted area between the drip and the sprinkler irrigation systems. So we need to understand all these in detail. Water flow rate means the amount of water discharged in an area at a particular time. It is expressed in liters per minute, that is in short LPM, or gallons per minute, that is GPM. Micro sprinklers, micro sprinklers are emitters, commonly known as sprinkler or spray heads. They operate by spreading water through air, usually in predetermined patterns. Depending on the water throw patterns, micro sprinklers are referred to as mini sprays or micro sprays. The sprinkler heads are external emitters individually connected to lateral pipes, typically using what can be called as micro tubes or a small diameter tubing. The sprinkler heads can be mounted on a support stake of 25 to 30 centimeter height connected to the supply pipe. Micro sprinkler system requires less energy and generally operates at a pressure range of 1 to 3 kilogram per centimeter square and a discharge range of 40 to 75 LPH. Micro sprinklers are desirable because Fewer sprinkler heads are required when compared with drip emitters. The system is suited for the crops with shallow rooting pattern like in case of garlic, onion, etc. Bubbler irrigation. Bubblers are used to irrigate bigger areas and apply water on per plant basis. Water from the bubbler head either runs down from the emission device or spreads a few inches in an umbrella pattern. Dissipate water pressure through a variety of diaphragm materials, which could be a silicon diaphragm inside an emitter flexes to regulate water output. And it also deflects water through small orifices. Bubbler emission devices are equipped with single or multiple port outlets. Bubblers are available in adjustable flow and pressure compensating types. Now let us understand the advantages of the micro irrigation system. It helps in saving water. It is useful in application of uniform water in the field. 
it helps in saving electricity it improves chemical application through the fertigation system it is also useful in reducing weeds and diseases it improves tolerance of crops to soil salinity it is suitable for various topography and soil types as compared to surface irrigation it regulates water through automated system it helps in improving the quality and yield of crops so i suppose you must have had a good learning experience watching this video so keep watching and enjoy learning thank you